Welcome to One Insight. My name is Rich Litvin. I grew up in London and I now live in LA. And this is a podcast for extraordinary top performers. You see, I've coached some of the most successful and talented people on the planet. I see what most people cannot see, and I dare to say what most people wouldn't dare to say. And what I know about success is that on the other side of it, it can actually be lonely. You can feel like more of an imposter the more successful you become. And when you're the most interesting person in the room, you're actually in the wrong room. I coach around insight. Life looks one way, something happens, the world looks different, and your entire world changes. It can happen in an instant. And this podcast is called One Insight because a single insight can change everything. I'm going to call this episode The Flywheel versus The Hamster Wheel. I, I, I've only got about 15 minutes to talk to Richard. Things happened, we didn't manage to get on time to this call. And so I said, well, we could reschedule or we could see what happens in 10 minutes. I love coaching with a time limit. I used to think that would be crazy. I need 90 minutes or two hours to do deep coaching. But it's really fun to always be pushing your edges, to increase your range. And all sorts of things happen when you're able to do that. So I've been building a muscle to do speed coaching over the last few years. It's not the only way I work. If you're a one-on-one client, I will spend 30 minutes, an hour, 90 minutes with you. But today we had 10 minutes and I said, let's play. And I'm calling this episode the flywheel versus the hamster wheel because so many of us know this feeling of being on the hamster wheel, running so fast that as success happens, we just can't stop. We keep moving and moving and moving. So many of us come into coaching because we're burnt out from doing that in another career, but we don't stop to see how we do it and how we operate. So we end up recreating that sense of burnout in this career. We have some success. And now instead of celebrating and taking time out, we think we need to do more to get more success. And then that hamster wheel starts running. And here we get this distinction, this call of the flywheel, that tiny wheel over here that moves these massive wheels over here, leverage. So watch and listen, particularly as you hear me talking to this man, Richard, his energy at the beginning, where it is and how I slow it down to create a sense of peace and ease for where he needs to go. Enjoy. Hi, Richard. I'm looking forward to talking to you today. And circumstances mean we only have 15 minutes for this conversation. I suggested we could reschedule. And we said between the two of us, well, let's let's see what happens in 15 minutes. And what I love to model for people, whilst there's real power in doing an hour, two hours of deep coaching, sometimes a shift can happen in just a few minutes. And that's what's really fun for me. We don't have to go into the rabbit hole of what are the 17 steps to turn it into action. Let's see where the shift lies. So tell me what's up, what's going on? Yeah, hi, Rich. I think the main thing on my mind right now is a bit of a sense that um, yeah, I've got a certain way of running my business. It was a really great year last year. I think I had an 80% or something increase in, in, in the business. It was great. It was feeling good. And this year, I'm there going, you know... Was well, that due to a few lucky contracts, a few big things that came in? Actually, this year, I'm not quite sure halfway through my financial year, it's not looking as good as it did last year. And have I kind of, was that just a lucky strike? Um, whilst I feel there's momentum in many ways, I feel I'm doing the right things. I'm just wondering, am I missing something, right? Is there, um, am I just stuck in one way of thinking? Yeah, I think about, I might raise my prices, but actually, I could almost reduce my prices perhaps and create more clients. All those things are going around in my head. And that's kind of, I suppose, um, yeah, the conversation that it might be fun to have. Yeah, it's a good one. And I can hear just from your voice, because you're speaking really fast and you're showing all mm. these ideas, it's giving me a sense of what's going on in your mind right now. Mm. So I'm going to deliberately slow down my speech patterns to kind of bring us down a little bit. And, but I, I acknowledge yeah. that. I get it. I have that too sometimes. <clears throat> It's a quality problem. You had an amazing year last year, 80% better than the year before. Now, there's always some luck involved and we play these games. I won't dismiss luck. And I have a belief that money is a sign of the amount of value we're creating in the world. It tells you me, mm-hmm. tells me you created a lot of value last year. That's great. We've got to just make sure that you create more value this year. 
I also want to help you to relax a little bit around, we think, and if you're listening, I'm drawing a graph that goes up from the bottom left to the top right in the air. We think, you know, success looks like this and it's this mm. line that goes up at 45 degrees and, and every year has to be more successful than the year before, has to make more money than the year before, more money than the month before. And my experience is I have to take that pressure off myself. I know it's going to go up over time, but the graph can actually look like this, ups and downs and wiggles and going backwards and forwards. And that helps me to breathe a little bit. And what happens when I share that with you? Hmm. Yeah, it's a point. I think I've, I know I've been telling myself a story that, you know, if I'm a, you know, to, in order to justify to myself that I'm a competent professional or I'm a high performer or whatever, then surely every year it must be going up exponentially, right? Um, and yeah, to, to realize that you're right, that's the, the overall curve is going to be going up. But when you zoom in, there's all sorts of noise and it might be higher or lower. And that's, yeah. that's fine as well. That's, that's a really good catch. I know some extremely successful people, extremely wealthy people, and, and no one ever has that line that goes continually from bottom left to top right, and, and it's, and it's a, mm. a straight line. There are ups and downs. I know millionaires who've lost millions of dollars. Yeah. I, I know people who are super wealthy who've been bankrupt along the journey. And so take the pressure off yourself mm. if you can. And, and how one of the ways I do that is I make sure that any money that coming, comes into my bank account goes straight out of my bank account. It goes mm. into savings accounts and other places so that I'm not using my bank account as a barometer for my emotions. Otherwise, I look at my bank account and it's gone up this week. I feel great. It's gone down the next week. I feel terrible. I, I want my bank account to always have the same amount of money in it. And there's other places here, my 401k, my savings, my retirement plan, whatever it is, money comes out. How, yeah. How's that feel? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's right. I think um, I do do that with my business a little bit. I have a, I, I try to keep an operating fund, and then when money comes in from clients, I move it out of that so that I don't, I don't spend too much, for example, right? Uh, based on what I can uh, afford. Um, how much? But, uh, do you, how much do you celebrate yourself as well, man? Eighty percent increase yeah, last year. Did you yeah. do anything to celebrate that? I probably had a glass of wine or something, <laughs> and then moved on immediately to the next, to the to the next challenge. Um, so, yeah, it's always, I, I do try, but I know that it's easy to beat yourself up about all the things that could have been or would have been. I, I do try quite consciously to kind of look at progress, but it, it's, it's easy to forget to do that. And, and it's important that you don't. It's important that, you know, in 4PC, you're a member of 4PC, it, once mm. a quarter we get together and one of the first questions I almost always ask is, look back over the last quarter and what are you proud of? Because hmm. we forget that we're, we're, we're high performers. We're focused on the future. We want to make an impact. We want to grow. We want to do, make a difference in the world. We're always looking into the future. Hmm. It's really important. We take time to look back and say, what am I proud of? What did I do that I'm really proud of? And then also to celebrate it. Yeah. You know, more than just a glass of wine. What if there was something hmm. that, you know, you know, what do you love to do? What makes you feel alive? What if you got a great massage every time you got a new client? What if you went on a little trip with your wife or dinner with your wife mm -hmm. every time you signed some new business? What could you do to treat yourself so your whole system feels good when you do something great and it's not always focused on, well, what's next? What's next? How could I do it bigger and better? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Because on one level, the money doesn't, it's not, not like I'm spending on, you know, I, I, don't, I don't have very high material tastes in many ways. You know, um, the few expenses we have, you know, we've got kids in school and things about it. But, um, um, yeah, so actually trying to enjoy, <laughs> enjoy life now a bit more. Yeah. And, and you important. know what, it, 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 this is like a little hot button I'll press sometimes with people who've got kids. Um, model this for your kids. If you don't model this for your kids, your kids are going to grow mm. up and they're going to model you and they're going to mm. be high performers. And they're <clears> going to be driven and they're never going to stop to celebrate their successes. And we know but, what happens on that mm. path. Well, it's a bit edgy. Right now, I've literally in the last week um, shrunk my hours. I've, I've knocked an hour off the morning um, and I've knocked uh, half an hour, possibly a bit more off the evening. Um, you know, and I'm sitting there saying, you know, like there's some kind of leap of faith that 
by somehow doing less, somehow more will arrive. But I'm not quite sure I believe it. <laughs> I'm not quite, you know, I'm always thinking, yeah, some people, yeah, they're at the stage where, where well, ask you, I'm gonna, slowing I'm gonna down ask, is going to help. I want to ask you about that because I have a belief that the less I work, the more successful mm. I am. And the less, less I work, the more money I make. So let me ask you, because whilst you, you, it feels like a leap of faith, you're not really sure you believe in it, turn back and look through your past mm. and give me one example of anywhere in your life where when you worked less, you were either more successful or you made more money? Huh. Um. <clears throat> well, I know what comes to mind is um, well, it, it, what comes to mind is when consulting, I mean, this is really pointless, small, tiny a little story, really. But um, you know, I took time to, um, to create some templates for business plans and things. And I was just beginning as a graduate, stuff which just saved me so much time and meant that actually I could do better results than most people in a fraction of the time because I'd spent the time to step back and, and to invest in some foundations. Uh, and I think when I was at Cisco, similar thing. I, I I, I took some time to create some thought leadership that was seen as an investment at the time. And then actually it took off, right? Nobody was asking for it at the time, but it created extra results. Nice. So I know you said, use the word pointless as you talked about it and they're the tiny examples, but that's what I'm looking for. You actually have in your history examples of when you slow down, you can create great successes. <clears throat> So it's not as much of a leap of faith as you think. It's not mm. like someone's told you you can do this magical thing and not work and make loads of money. I'm not saying, I'm not saying sit mm. on your couch all day and watch Netflix. <laughs> what you discover is when you slow down, you have an idea like, let me create some templates. Let me dive into thought leadership. I have a belief that space is mm. where miracles occur. And I just mm. heard you give two examples of that. So I love that you're taking more time yeah. off. So what I'm hearing is that it, it might not be about shortening my hours then. It might be about blocking out those hours for something else. That's a better way no, of it. It might be, but it might just be, I'm going to go for a walk. I'm going to do a bit more mm. exercise. Mm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch a bit more TV or read a few books. You know, the, the cool thing is about what we do. If you go for a walk, you see something on the walk and it's an idea for your next piece of IP. Mm. You, you do some more exercise and you feel healthier and fitter. So you, you, right. you're, you're more inspired. So yeah. don't worry too much about what you do with that time. It's not like, okay, mm. now I've got to read 27 business <laughs> right. hours. Create space and then mm. watch what occurs. Yeah, I think that's, um, it's great. It's, yeah, it's, it's good. It's, it's, it's encouraging me actually because yeah, I blocked out two of those hours that I've saved for sport. Uh, I felt I wasn't doing that enough. It wasn't consistent enough. And yeah, I think that's helpful. I think that's giving me yeah, a sense that actually I kind of preach it as well. I know making time to slow down is important, but you get on this this drive, um, and it's hard to, you know, in, it, there's an emotional, visceral thing, right, about actually. Well, I'll taking tell you what it is. Off. It's a scarcity mentality, because there are ten thousand generations before us who all lived in scarcity. Maybe mm. some of us don't. Maybe a few of our parents didn't. But other than a few kings and queens and the odd pope. Almost everyone in history lived in mm. scarcity. Mm. So when you have success, but then your system says, keep working, make more money, be more successful next year, next week, next month, your system is still in scarcity mode. And what we're saying is train your system. Uh, let your nervous system relax. You might not have noticed, but I see your voices relax a little mm. bit. It's softened. You're talking at a slower speed than you were at the beginning. Right, yeah. And so this is what it's mm. about. And, and, and taking that space is, is not a leap of faith. It's stretching your nervous system to know I'm okay and I'm going to be okay. And if I, you know, I have some great years and some not great years, but I know how to serve people. And when I do, and when I create value for people, money comes in my direction too. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's really almost trusting the process because I see the flywheel building, you know, I'm having conversations with extraordinary leaders, uh, people have achieved incredible things and that gradually starts to 
to come in. And I know, objectively speaking, where I am now is so much further than what's where I was even a year ago in many ways. But I think you're right, taking the eye off the the bank account on every single month and wondering wondering what the highs and lows mean is not. So I, I just heard a distinction okay. as you talk between the flywheel and the hamster. <clears throat> Yeah. Most of us know how to live on the hamster wheel and we don't, we're not paying attention and it's rolling and rolling and rolling. We, and the faster we go, the faster it goes. But the flywheel is where's the tiniest piece of leverage I can have to make this move over here and that move over here. And mm. so that's where you, your job is to pay attention. Am I on the hamster wheel today mm. or am I turning the flywheel? Yeah. And it's obviously what I help my clients with. I use that distinction. It's just always because you need to do it yourself, right? And it's hard to do for yourself sometimes to, to see teach when you are. what we most need to learn so often. Yeah, yeah. as always. And, and so look, talking of flywheels, what, what's this been? Nine minutes? In nine minutes, we get to a place of ease and spaciousness and, and possibilities that can arise. This mm. is the game. This is you know, the tiniest of things that make a big difference. So thanks for trusting me. Thanks for playing. Thanks, Rich. Great, great result in 10 minutes. Thank you. For most of human history, it wasn't called coaching. It was called leadership. And it's what I love to do, to coach people, to lead people, and to mess with people's thinking. If you'd like more of this, or if you'd like to learn more about our community of extraordinary top performers, go to richlitvin.com forward slash one insight.